So this is uh, the 2022-23 webinar series for the Global Education Office of Graduate School of Education, Koto University. Do you hear me? Series will deal with uh, can Japanese model of education withstand the diversity challenges. So we are going to have seven lectures altogether. Let me start by explaining the webinar series. Let me go over the basic purpose of uh, having uh, this lecture. And uh, after that, I will introduce the speaker. In the past uh, two years, uh, the Global Education Office uh, has focused on the, its attention on the Japanese-style education, inviting uh, researchers from uh, Japan as well as from abroad. And we have organized a webinar series in 2020, we uh, focus our attention on the critical, historical, and transnational aspects. And uh, we went over the past 100 years or so to study various education practices that went overseas from Japan. And uh, we have focused our attention on the overseas uh, uh, transplant of Japanese uh, education in the form of EduPort, for instance, uh, conducted by MEXT. And uh, in 2021, uh, we focused our attention on the dialogue with East Asia to reconsider the Japanese style education. And uh, uh, we invited uh, East Asian researchers uh, to listen to their ideas as to how Japanese style education compare uh, to East Asia, for instance. And uh, the 2020 series uh, are uploaded uh, on our website. We are in preparation to do the same for 2021 webinar series. Both of the webinar series uh, take reference uh, uh, on the past and East Asia uh, to take a relook once on the Japanese style education. This year, 2022 and 2023, uh, we have titled the webinar series, uh, Can Japanese Model of Education Withstand the Diversity Challenges? And uh, we are scheduling to have seven lectures altogether. The reference point here is uh, the kind of uh, uh, problems uh, that uh, people are experiencing uh, from this standpoint of diversity. And of course, uh, in order to respond to the interest from overseas, there are attempts uh, to uh, transplant Japanese uh, style education abroad uh, with a focus on the good points of the Japanese style education. But if you look at uh, the debate within Japan, when it comes to LGBTQ, gender, and uh, ethnicity, and uh, language, culture, and uh, disability, for instance, uh, there are many issues uh, still remaining in uh, responding to diversity. And of course, the Japanese style education has been noted uh, internationally uh, for uh, its uh, features in uh, trying to promote whole uh, human education. But at the same time, uh, there have been a pressure uh, to, uh, towards uniformity. There are differences among children, and yet uh, when they go to study at Japanese schools, uh, they face all sorts of uh, walls and obstacles. And uh, therefore, when we look at the Japanese style education from this perspective, uh, we can identify various features and challenges. What are the strengths of the Japanese style education, and how can these strengths be utilized uh, to uh, promote affirmative education based on uh, the premise of diversity. What, how can uh, the Japanese-style diversity education be different uh, from multicultural education in the West, for instance? In this webinar series, uh, we will be inviting uh, researchers and practitioners from in and out of Japan once again uh, to deepen understanding on this subject. So, uh, let me introduce the speaker 
for today. This is uh, the opening lecture, so to speak, uh, for 2022 webinar series. We invite uh, Dr. Uh, Watanabe, Associate Professor of Saitama University. Uh, he is with Center for Research in General Education. And uh, probably he is one of the most uh, outspoken uh, researchers on this uh, subject that we can listen to. He has uh, spoken widely on uh, sexual diversity issues. And uh, he has uh, also lectured at uh, uh, study meetings of uh, uh, the prefecture as well as the Board of Education on gender equality issues and the human rights uh, learning. He has uh, written widely as well in 2016. Uh, he has published a book. Uh, he supervised uh, a book uh, on uh, uh, diverse uh, genders, diverse ways of living. And uh, in 2018, uh, he has ish published a book from Heibonsha Publishing on uh, sexual diversity. And also, uh, he has uh, written another book, uh, published another book in 2019, utilizing a comic um, approach for children so that uh, he utilizes various illustrations and uh, uh, comic uh, um, books uh, to enlighten children on this uh, subject. Uh, he has also introduced uh, the queer theory uh, to educational practice, and he has written many papers on queer education theory. As for today's uh, lecture, first of all, we will be inviting uh, Dr. Watanabe to speak for 40 to 45 minutes and uh, move on to Q&A. Uh, during the Q&A, those of you who wish to speak, uh, please raise your hand and unmute, and uh, you are able to speak directly with Dr. Watanabe. So, Dr. Watanabe, we, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Takayama, and uh, how to do, and hello to everyone. My name is Watanabe of Saitama University. Thank you for being with me, although the time is limited. Uh, the topic I'd like to give you is the challenges of sexual diversity for Japanese education. Uh, the historical process we have seen in recent years and challenges we have found so far uh, is what I would like to take you through. Uh, first, government's actions concerning education about sexual diversity. In 1979, Minister of Education issued one document and there uh, homosexuals were considered as perverted sexual delinquency. Uh, but uh, with uh, the uh, court ruling uh, on Huchu Youth House incident, in that process of uh, judicial actions in 1993, uh, the Ministry of Education deleted that wording. And this particular incident and the uh, court ruling was perhaps the very first one uh, concerning uh, the sexual diversity and homosexuals. And this house uh, is accommodation facility and a uh, human rights group for homosexuals used uh, that facility, but there was an objection that they, it, they shouldn't use it because uh, this is for the heterosexuals. And they were also discriminated and harassed by other guests uh, in the house. And uh, the prefecture government uh, ordered that uh, the homosexuals shouldn't use uh, that house. But then in 1997, ruling by the Tokyo High Court uh, said administrative authorities, including prefectures, board of education, uh, need to give careful and sensitive attention in view of various needs, including those of homosexuals as a minority group. They are required to adequately promote the rights and interests of homosexuals, and it is impermissible for them to be indifferent or ignorant about them as an entity authorized to exercise administ administrative disposition." Unquote. Such an entity uh, include those which are involved in the public education. And this was a very important uh, epoch-making ruling in 1997. And then in 2000, the government and uh, the uh, uh, lawmakers act, enacted an act concerning human rights education and human rights awareness raising. And based on that act, 
uh, in 2002, basic plan on human rights education and awareness raising was uh, uh, prepared and on policy measures to promote human rights education and awareness raising uh, for uh, measures concerning others discrimination against homosexuals and other issues concerning sexual orientation was uh, uh, mentioned as those which require measures which should be considered to solve them according to the respective circumstances. And this particular wording was uh, very much influenced by uh, the ruling by the Tokyo High Court and homosexual groups received the hearing surveys by the authorities before uh, this uh, basic plan was uh, prepared and uh, because of uh, such activities and actions uh, the uh, basic plan uh, included homosexuals uh, uh, but it only says uh, measures shall be uh, considered and uh, it doesn't say that measures should be taken to solve the problems so uh, one step still behind then in 2003, after the basic plan was announced, GID, gender identity disorder, is a diagnosis given to people with such problems. And those people with the GID uh, were allowed to change their sex on family register. Uh, and that act was passed in 2003. And around that time, the general population became to be aware of the presence of such people with the GID, gender identity disorder. And those people also began to raise their voices about their suffering and problems concerning school education. And they began to lobby against the Ministry of Education. As a result, in 2010, uh, Ministry of Education issued a notice concerning thorough educational counseling on problems of pupils and students. Uh, pupils and students uh, from elementary school to high school with a gender identity disorder requires a fine-tuned response and needs to receive educational counseling and the uh, a careful and a sensitive approach should be taken. And that was mentioned uh, in the notice. And the notice uh, uses the term GID, gender identity disorder, and this uh, uh, diagnosis, gender identity disorder, uh, was also mentioned as a wording in the act in 2003 for the change on uh, the sex on the family register. And WHO, WHO World Health Organization, Uh, already eliminates uh, such a problem like uh, GID from the category of uh, disabilities. However, in Japan, um, such a name diagnosis uh, GID is necessary uh, to receive any uh, measures under the law, uh, but in the near future, such a wording will be um, made not necessary. And then various uh, GID-related NPOs and NGOs began to say that the problem exists not only for people with GID, but also for those people who have issues concerning uh, their sexual problems, such as uh, homosexuals and LGBTQ. And in that process, people have found out that the suicide rate and the suicide ideation rate among LGBTQ was relatively high. And based on that, uh, in 2010, uh, 2012, uh, government released outlines for comprehensive measures for the prevention of suicide was issued. And then in that document, Minister of Education, uh, mentioned uh, that with regard to sexual minorities whose ratio of having suicidal ideation is reportedly high, we must promote the understanding of school staff and teachers. Uh, the outlines also mentions what should be done by the Ministry of Welfare and also Ministry of Justice. Uh, but uh, GID was uh, clearly uh, mentioned as a sexual minorities. And then 
in such a process, the uh, Ministry of Education uh, conducted a national survey concerning school responses to GID. And this survey was uh, strictly limited to issues concerning GID. And as a result of this survey, it uh, revealed that there were 606 reports concerning education consulting on GID. But 606 reports are only those which uh, the students and pupils and schools uh, allowed to release. And uh, this is only 60% of the schools um, which uh, give due consideration to the sexual minorities and only uh, the remaining 40% were still a problem. And the issues uh, in the free comment included multiple responses, such as career path after graduation from high school and the school to work transition and lack of access to specialist physicians and difficulty obtaining understanding of parents. And those were the comments given from multiple respondents. In 2015, uh, the Minister of Education came up with the implementation of fine-tuned response related to pupils and students with gender identity disorder. This was a notice that the uh, ministry has issued. Now, this was not only limited to gender identity disorder, but it says as follows, it made it clear that the need to address concerns and worries exists not only for pupils and students with gender identity disorder, and is to be considered more generally to cover all pupils and students who are in the sexual minority. So it was extended beyond the gender identity disorder, including everyone in the sexual minority, including homosexuals. Now, this... Uh, uh, says uh, the so-called sexual minority, because uh, this was uh, taken uh, from the Minister of Justice document. Also, it says that in the class and homeroom settings, the appropriate pupil and student guidance, as well as promotion of human rights education that does not tolerate bullying or discrimination for any reason whatsoever, should provide the foundation for support for pupils and students with concerns and worries. Important point is the promotion of human rights education. And um, in the past, it was talked about as uh, individual educational guidance, but uh, now uh, these focus is on promotion of human rights education. And number three, pupils and students with gender identity disorder or those who are in the sexual minority might not want to reveal themselves based on this understanding. It is desirable to provide an environment in the schools to make it easier for them to consult at any time. As a start, the teachers and staff should avoid inconsiderate words and actions related to gender identity disorder and sexual minority in general. The important word here is desirable to provide an environment in the schools so that they feel more easy to consult. And uh, this uh, is also part of the promotion of human rights education. And uh, next year, after this uh, notice was issued, Minister of Education came up uh, with a similar document uh, for teachers and staffs. So this was an educational material to enlighten the teachers and staffs on this subject. And this was uh, distributed uh, in 2016. And everyone can see this uh, in the Minister of Education website in the PDF form. And uh, for the first time, it talks about sexual orientation, uh, gender identity, and uh, homosexual and heterosexual. And also sexual ori orientation and gender identity, SOGI, or sometimes called SOGI. This is also clearly, clearly uh, written as well. And the transgender children and the response uh, to such children are also included in the Q&A. There are 12 items in the Q&A, and uh, at the very last, uh, it also talks about uh, homosexual children as well. Most of it deals with uh, a gender identity disorder and transgender children.
based on the survey conducted in 2013, uh, these are examples of school support for pupils and students related to GID. And also, this is included in the uh, document in 2016 as well, on, in terms of clothing, allow them to wear uniforms, clothes, and gym clothes of their own gender identity. It also talks about hairstyle. In the Japanese uh, schools, uh, for boys, uh, uh, short hairstyle uh, is uh, uh, prescribed according to the school rule. And uh, for girls, uh, uh, they are able to uh, have hair length uh, just going up to shoulders. But uh, here, uh, the hairstyle uh, talks about allowing uh, uh, boys uh, uh, to have uh, longer than standard hair length, so a certain degree. And and also, in terms of names, I uh, use names of their choice in school documents, including report cards uh, or list them in the student directly with the gender identity of their choice. In swimming class, uh, changing clothes uh, may um, be stressful, and therefore, a uh, separate uh, date could be set, uh, a supplementary lessons for such children, and uh, or substitute with written reports for school trips, allow them to use single rooms, separate schools for bathing, etc. These are some examples of the school support. For pupils and students with gender identity disorder or those transgender children, they experience stress because there are certain school rules regarding clothes and hairstyle based on board, whether you are a boy or a girl. But if you think about it, clothes and hairstyle needs to uh, respect the freedom of each individual. But uh, there are uh, very strict school rules and, uh, in place, and therefore pupils and students uh, who are transgender may suffer and feel stress. So in this case, the idea is not to change school rules, but rather uh, to uh, adapt accordingly. Of course, uh, the most basic approach would be to change the school rules, but that is not readily done. And also, in terms of swimming, um, there are set of swimming suits uh, for in schools, but um, more recently, the trend seems to be to unify uh, the swimming suit uh, for both the male and female pupils and students. This may be less stressful, but at the same time, well, we need to think more about diversity. The basic idea with that approach is uh, to make it less stressful for the minority pupils and students. Uh, and uh, one way of doing that uh, may be to unify. For a close, um, boys and girls, uh, uh, according to school rules, uh, are um, to come up, come with uh, hats in case of girls and caps in case of boys. But uh, now some schools have adopted the approach uh, to adopt uh, hats uh, for both boys and girls. Uh, so it's a step towards unification. We need to address diversity, and yet uh, the step uh, seems to go more and more towards unification. Better approach would be to have better freedom of choice and according to what uh, he or she has uh, chosen, the best thing is to have uh, no discrimination or bullying. But uh, according to what the uh, ministry has uh, promoted so far, they have not gone that far in addressing uh, the situation of diversity. In 2016, a G7 a summit meeting was held in Japan, and uh, the ministers of education uh, came together 
to hold the G7 Karashiki Education Minister's Meeting, uh, which uh, has uh, put out the Karashiki Declaration. And uh, there is uh, a section on diversity education, which discusses about children and young people in difficult situations, uh, which includes children who are suffering discrimination because of their sexual orientation and gender identity. And therefore, the ministers agreed to the utmost to ensure inclusive and equitable learning opportunities and outcomes. And committed uh, to realizing educational environments to do this. Out of the G7 countries, uh, legally approved the same-sex marriage does not exist only in Japan. So in other countries, uh, it is legally possible to uh, have same-sex marriage. In 2017, uh, the Ministry of Education came up with a basic policy on prevention of bullying, etc. And in the attachment, it uh, talked about uh, the important points in preventing uh, bullying, promoting early detection, and taking measures against bullying in schools, where it says it is uh, important to foster correct understanding among teachers and staffs, and everyone should know about the response that needs to be taken by schools. I talked about uh, the document that was uh, written from the standpoint of prevention of suicides, but in this case, it was uh, a document on prevention of bullying. In 2017, um, the guidelines for the course of study was revised. And uh, uh, for this purpose, the Minister of Education co collected uh, public comments and uh, there were some comments saying that sexual minority should be defined and interest towards the opposition, opposite sex in health and physical education should be deleted, or that uh, guidance is required regarding general knowledge on physical maturity of both sexes, interest towards the opposite sex, and sexual urge. And care of sexual minorities should not be included in guidance, but should be dealt with by individual counseling, to which the ministry responded saying that uh, the ministry will provide guidance so that fine-tuned response, including counseling, takes place at schools. And regarding the sexual minority mentioned in the above notice, the ministry is of the view that it is difficult to make it a part of guidance when considering the need for individualized guidance, the understanding of parents and the public, and the need to provide appropriate guidance to the teachers. So most of the public since they are not uh, fully aware of uh, human rights. Um, I feel that it needs to be included in the guidelines for the course of study. And I think the teachers uh, should be trained as such uh, with that perspective. And therefore, um, the ministry was not taking that uh, path. And so what happened to the guidelines for the course of study of elementary schools? In physical education, under health education, it says that uh, children should understand that the body becomes more like that of adults in puberty and they might experience the first menstruation or ejaculation and also that they may develop interest towards the opposite sex. And so it is mostly heterosexual in nature, and that is heterosexualism is still at the center. And together with the guideline for the course of a study commentary was issued by the Ministry of Education, there were certain changes and progress. It says that uh, body changes take place in puberty, and those activities uh, vary from person to person with boys having a stouter body and girls having a rounder body and showing uh, the dichotomy between the boys and girls. However, it also says that in it says that the children should be able to understand that although 
these phenomena occur earlier or later in some individuals. There are individual differences, and these phenomena are the result of the growth into the adult body. But later, uh, that part, these phenomena occur earlier or later in some individuals, and those take place in everyone. And those are two sentences were deleted, and uh, the revised wording suggests the possibility that those differences were reduced to individual differences and those matters can be dealt with as individual person-to-person -person difference. For the guideline for the junior high education, in health and physical education, the students are to study sexual transmitted infections and various infectious diseases. And uh, the document says that during puberty, reproductive functions mature through education, endocrine action, and appropriate behavior is necessary to cope with the changes that accompany maturation. And regarding uh, the infectious diseases, HIV and AIDS and STIs were to be covered in the contents of education, the document says. However, if I digress a bit from the main topic of today's discussion, please allow me to point out one interesting matter here. Uh, regarding reproductive functions mature uh, and uh, uh, it's, the document says that uh, the content shall not cover the process of pregnancy. And the Minister of Education considers this, that sexual intercourse should not be covered in the education. Although the document said that STI should be taught, but uh, the sexual intercourse shouldn't be taught. But then how can we talk and explain STIs without mentioning sexual intercourse? And this shows one contradiction in Japanese education. And also it says that Uh, the center of uh, the matter is still on the heterogeneity, heterosexualism, uh, because uh, it says that in puberty, interest in the opposite sex increases. Uh, so in such a manner, the current uh, guidelines still focus on uh, the heterosexuality, but actually the textbooks are changing uh, from 20. Well, in Japan, we have the government system of authorizing textbooks to be used in education. But in 2019, such authorized textbooks were introduced also on the course of ethics. Uh, here, uh, there are some textbooks which do mention LGBTs and sexual diversity. And also from uh, 2019, uh, in the health uh, textbooks uh, of uh, the physical education, two publishers uh, issued textbooks uh, that refer to such issues like LGBT and uh, sexual diversity, and also um, uh, the uh, social studies and home economics and art textbooks begin to mention uh, gender diversity. And actually, 17 out of 106 textbooks do mention sexual diversity. And for health and physics education, three out of four textbooks do mention sexual minorities or sexual diversity. So gradually, such issues or concerning sexual minorities are beginning to be mentioned in various textbooks. So last year, the Central Council for Education, the advisory body to the Minister of Education, uh, issued uh, a document titled Aiming to Establish a Japanese Style of School Education in the Reiwa Era. And uh, the item talking about the raising the quality of school education, enhancing diversity and exclusiveness, uh, talks about the fact that there are children who worry about gender identity disorder or uh, children who worry about gender identity. And in order for such children to feel safe at school, it is important to foster correct understanding of gender identity disorder, sexual orientation, or gender identity among teachers and staff, and to promote appropriate educational counseling 
at schools based on such understanding. Uh, this has been written up in this report by the Central Council of Education. So this uh, focuses uh, its attention on correct understanding uh, among teachers and staffs and uh, uh, promotion of uh, educational counseling, but it does not talk about human uh, rights education. Currently, uh, the uh, student guidance summary is in the process of uh, a revision, and in Chapter 12, uh, there is a chapter on issues related to sex and gender, and uh, Chapter 12, Section 5, uh, talks about issues and response related to sexual diversity. So this reflects uh, the 2015 document or the educational material that was uh, published in 2016. Let me talk about uh, the textbooks that are being used. Uh, this is a textbook officially approved in 2019, uh, elementary school health education textbook for grades three and four, uh, published by Corbin Showing Publisher. And in the main text, it says, puberty and the changes of feelings. When you reach puberty, you start to notice the differences of boys and girls. You might also become attracted to the opposite sex or sometimes have opposite feelings. Such feelings are natural and there are individual differences, it says. What is written in red? Uh, you might also become attracted to the opposite sex. So uh, it is uh, mostly heterosexual, uh, heterosexuality that is emphasized. But if you go to the column, a supplementary text, uh, Partial revision of the guidelines for the course of study in 2003 made it possible to expand the learning content beyond the set of guidelines, and uh, therefore a column like this is one such attempt to provide uh, supplementary learning. And uh, this discusses uh, worries regarding sex and gender. Some of you might feel that your physical gender seems different from the gender of your feeling. Some of you might feel no interest in the opposite sex. If you think your feelings towards your own gender is different from that of other people, or if you have any worries, consult an adult person whom you can trust. And uh, uh, a telephone a counseling uh, is also introduced. So uh, this has also been included in the textbook for elementary school children. But I wonder how you feel about this sort of approach. Now, what happens uh, then uh, for the junior high school? This was published uh, by Gakken and uh, officially proved in 2020. And uh, uh, seventh graders use this. In chapter two, title page, the title page uh, introduces uh, the founder and director of Niji Iro Diversity, which is, which is an NGO, uh, or MPO, working on LGBT issues. And uh, Maki Muraki, the founder and director, uh, wrote a short column at, under the title, Turning the Minority Voice into Power to Change the Society. And uh, in the footnote, there is explanation on LGBT and SOGI. So that's the title page for chapter two. But in section four of chapter two, titled How to Face Up to Sex and Gender, it says, um, in puberty, sexual awareness uh, starts to change with the maturity of physical functions. You might feel bewildered by enhanced sexual desire or sexual urge. You also might become interested in the opposite sex and might want to be close to a specific individual based on feelings that are different from friendship. But there are different individual differences in such sexual awareness. Still, uh, the focus is heterosexuality. In chapter five, prevention of sexually transmitted diseases, there is a diagram. And sexually uh, transmitted diseases, of course, uh, uh, affect uh, um, people uh, regardless of gender. 
And prevention, of course, is uh, important. So uh, there are different shapes in the diagram. And the diagram um, basically assumes that the connection of sexual contacts um, take uh, heterosexuality for granted because lines connect different shapes only and not the same shapes. So when we think about all of this, LGBTQ related uh, education and support of such education has uh, different uh, issues. First of all, Sensitivity towards the people with gender identity disorder uh, was the starting point. It was considered sort of a disability, and uh, uh, care was uh, considered to be in need uh, because of uh, uh, such children uh, were considered to be uh, some sort of a disease or disorder. And uh, uh, care and sensitivity for such uh, people uh, were considered to require response in the form of individual education counseling. And uh, in case of uh, transgender uh, female or transgender male, um, gender norms uh, were uh, applied uh, to the counseling. In other words, basic norms, gender norms uh, were not questioned it was uh, calling for adaptation. And it was not positioned uh, as a subject of learning. In 1985, UNESCO uh, issued a declaration on the rights to learn, that uh, we all have the right, right to learn. And uh, for children uh, who may be LGBTQ, if you don't uh, teach them about uh, such uh, aspects, uh, it is an infringement of the right to learn. In the notice issued in 2015, a human rights education uh, was added in, as content, but uh, it was uh, not considered a part of a curriculum. So uh, there was a uh, disregard of group study. And also heterosexualism main was maintained uh, as the mainstream. And of course, uh, in the textbook, uh, um, there are supplementary uh, columns, explanations, uh, footnotes uh, to deal with LGBT, sexual minority, etc. But such additional explanations or footnotes reproduces the sense of uh, being something special. More recently, uh, the so-called LGBT education is being talked about. But in practice, it discusses LGBT people only. And uh, the class uh, teaches only about people of LGBT uh, and uh, heterosexuality or cisgender are not the kind of terms that are not that are used. In other words, all, even though most people are cisgender, cisgender is not a term that is often used. These people are just called common people, normal people. So such texts, textbooks, talking about heterosexuality, uh, not talking about heterosexuality or cisgender as such, tend to reproduce the sense of them being more common rather than special. And uh, junior high school students uh, may go often to the internet uh, to uh, look up uh, um, things about uh, LGBT, and uh, they may watch the YouTube. So the guidelines for the course of study and what is written in the guidelines they may not meet the needs of children's development uh, or reality today. Minister of Education talks about uh, giving uh, education as fit 
or in keeping with the development stage of children, but it is actually not meeting such needs today. So the educational environment needs to be developed, including the use of teaching materials that positions heterosexuality and cisgender within the context of diversity together with LGBT. Not uh, making LGBT as common, but to include the heterosexual people and cisgender people in the category of diversity and discuss them all together. I think that is the basic approach that needs to be taken. Thank you.